Welcome back to Build, Break and Beyond and on today's episode we're going to gut the entire interior of the car and see the real condition of the sheet metal of a car that sat for 28 years outside. So before we jump into gutting the interior of the car today, uh, I did a bunch of research on all the parts that I found in the car. A lot of the parts are for the current engine that's in it, some of the parts are for the engine that was taken out and there's about a dozen pieces that don't go to this car at all. They don't even go to the chassis. Sifting through all those uh, gave me a really good idea of every single thing that I'm missing and it should be uh, relatively easy to figure out uh, what parts I need to order. I also found out that this car retailed for $38,000 in 1975, which probably doesn't sound like that much, but when you adjust it for inflation, it cost $184,000. So that does give me some type of hope that the cars that I want today, like the Mercedes E63S and a couple other ones, uh, are going to depreciate enough to the point where I can actually afford them. Hopefully I don't have to wait 28 years though. So let's go gut the interior. So just as a sign of how old this car is, when I just lightly push on this seat, you can see some of this filler material starts coming out and my hand gets easier to press down every single time. So it's not retaining its shape at all. I don't know what any of this means. This is what's been falling out of the seat every time that I crunch it. I have no idea what it is. And it is completely annihilated. All right, this doesn't look too bad. It definitely is not perfect. The car was stored outside for over two decades. But there are some interesting things. I always find it really cool looking through the bottoms of cars like this. All the things that have been discarded and people haven't found over time. All these old quarters and pennies and stuff, candy wrappers, crayon puzzle pieces, playing cards, not sure what that is, more coins, chess piece, just a bunch of junk but still kind of interesting. All right, time for the front seat. Passenger seat, there's not much, some more crayons, a couple coins buried in there, but mainly just random nuts and bolts and just gunk. Alright, now for the driver's side. I don't know if you can see, both of these are really badly rusted. The kept nut, which is supposed to be on the bottom, uh, broke off on both of them. The nut is essentially just spinning while I'm spinning the ratchet. So I'm gonna have to get creative, otherwise the seat will not come out. The bolts that were holding the back of these on were extremely rusted and wouldn't come out. So I went in here with this attachment on my Dremel and I slowly chewed away at the heads and basically the heads are completely gone. The bottom of the bolt is still stuck, but I can now get this rail off. And here 
is what one of the heads is reduced to now. And that's what we have left of one of the bolts. And there's the other. One really cool thing that I've kind of glazed over but noticed when I bought the car is these license plate frames. There's identical one on the front and the back, and these are solid brass. Obviously, MC Hammer's name is Stanley Kirk Burrell, so this is Mr. Burrell's Mercedes-Benz. Uh, they have the Mercedes-Benz indented in there. Clearly, it used to have some blue paint back there, and I just think that they are so cool. And here again, it says solid brass on the back side. So these are very, very cool, and I'm looking forward to getting them in better shape and putting them back on the car. And here's the inside of the back passenger door. This is obviously some type of liner that's fallen down. Oddly, there's a dime in here. And just a bunch of dead spiders. This is pretty interesting. It looks like someone was cutting in here. I can't even imagine what the reason was. So very interestingly, inside of the door in this cavity right here behind the regular door panel that's there, I found three baseball cards. I guess someone didn't like this guy. One thing that's common about every single one of these doors is that the weather stripping looks okay until you get to the corners and then it's just absolutely terrible and all chewed up. Every single weather stripping piece is going to need to be replaced, which is fine and expected on a car of this age. Never really thought I'd be doing that much cleaning on the inside of a door panel. All right, so that's where we're going to stop today with tearing apart the interior. I got a pretty good idea of the condition of the car. It looks fairly good overall for a car that sat outside for 28 years. And I'm going to start looking into how to fix up all the interior pieces that are still in really good condition. I'm going to start looking into finding replacement padding for the bench seat back here and the two front seats since all the padding inside of them is completely worked. So the next time you see this car on this channel, we're actually going to be working on the drive line of the car. It is going to be a slightly messier job than today was. So again, thanks for watching and thanks for liking. Be sure you subscribe so that you can follow along on the journey of this entire car, getting it from where it is now to driving all the way across country and the 50th anniversary of the Cannonball Run. See you next time. Oh good, the horn still works.